Hello, in this video we're going to go over this problem that was suggested to me by one of the users on the channel. I, I forgot what their name was. So the problem goes like this. Each term in the sequence 101010 starting with the seventh term is the sum of the previous six terms mod 10. Prove that 010101 never occurs in this sequence. So at this point you would want to pause the video, think about this problem, spend quite a bit of time and then come back and watch the rest of the video. This video is going to involve some very interesting techniques of problem solving. What you're about to see is exactly the thought process that I had when I solved this problem. And the video is going to involve some interesting problem solving techniques. Let's start with some notations. I called the nth term of the sequence xn. The very first thing is let's see if I can find a pattern. So I started writing down about 30 terms of the sequence manually and of course I didn't see a pattern. I wasn't really expecting to see a pattern because otherwise the problem would be too easy. But is there a repetition? Is there going to be a pattern? So is it reasonable to expect for it to have a pattern? And the answer is in fact yes because if you look at six consecutive terms of this sequence there are 10 to the power of six possibilities. Each of the terms have 10 possibilities, 0 through 9, so there are 10 to the power of six possibilities. What does that mean? It means if you look at 10 to the power of 6 plus 1 six tuples, two of them would be the same, which means after that point there would be a repetition. Now the question is where would that repetition start? Is it possible that it doesn't start from the beginning? The answer is no. You can always also backtrack. In other words, if you know xn through xn plus 5, you can find the previous one. So if you have two six tuples that are the same, the previous terms xn minus 1 in this case and xm minus 1 must also be the same because of that backtracking property. So then I decided to write it down. Since mod 10, the number of possibilities is way too large, I decided to write it down mod 2 and mod 5. When I wrote it down mod 2, I was hopeful that I would be able to get a contradiction, but Unfortunately, I actually did get the sequence 010101. So what that means is that likely if I focus only on mod 5, I will still be able to get a contradiction. So next step was to write down several terms of the sequence mod 5. I wrote down about another 30 terms or so, and I still did not get a contradiction. I, I did not see any pattern, did not see any repetition, which means that was not very helpful. But should I keep writing down terms with a similar argument that I made above? We will have 5 to the power of 6 possibilities, which would be better, but it would not be significant progress here. So at this point, I basically abandoned this idea. And I thought, okay, let's just keep working on mod 5 because th things are a bit simpler, but let's try to use the idea of invariant. So what is an invariant? Invariant is a property that every 6 tuples satisfy that property but the subsequence 010101 does not satisfy that property so in other words what I'm trying to do is I want to find some property that every six consecutive terms of the sequence satisfy that property but the sequence that they gave us does not satisfy that property the first thing I did was let's look at the sum but the sum is not a really good idea because if you look at the sum of six consecutive terms, the sum of 101010 is the same as the sum of 010101. At that point, I thought, okay, what about the alternating sum? Alternating sum gives you xn minus xn plus 1 plus xn plus 2 minus xn plus 3 and so on. If you evaluate that, yes, it is an, uh, different for 101010 and 010101 but it is actually not an invariant if you evaluate uh, a few of these consecutive terms you'll see that this is not an invariant so then I thought okay so I can't just keep like writing down these different uh, sums and hope to find some invariant then I decided that maybe I can systematically either find an invariant of this form or rule out any invariant of that form so what I decided to do was to try an invariant of a linear form. In order for i to be an invariant, we need i of y1 through y6 to be the same as i of y2 through y6 
comma y1 plus y6 because this condition tells us this is an invariant. In other words, applying this property to the first six terms is the same as applying this property to the second six terms and so on. And the simplest invariant here is something similar to what I had tried and I failed, which would be something linear. So I tried this linear thing. In order for this to be an invariant, it would have to satisfy the first condition. And what I need is for a1, a2, all the way to a6 to be some integers. So let's write down what I need. What I need is this function to satisfy this property. Let's write down a system of equations. If you write down a system of equations, the coefficient of y1 on top is a1. The coefficient of y1 at the bottom would be a6 because you're multiplying the last component by a6. Coefficient of y2 on top is a2. Coefficient of y2 at the bottom would be a1 plus a6. So a2 must be a1 plus a6. a3 is the coefficient of y3. a2 plus a6 is coefficient of y3 at the bottom. a4 is coefficient of y4 on top. a3 plus a6 is coefficient of y4 at the bottom. Similar for a5. a5 would have to be a6 plus a4. a6 would have to be a5 plus a6. Now I have a system of equations and I was hoping that there is a solution to this system. If I can find a solution, then this would be an invariant. So I was hoping that this function gives me a different value for the sequence 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. But that is to be determined. So let's uh, solve the system. The second one gives you a2 equals 2a6 because a1 is equal to a6. The third one gives you a3 equals 3a6. The fourth one gives you a4 equals 4a6 if you plug in a3 equals 3a6. The next one gives you a5 equals 5a6 which is 0 mod 5. And finally the last one gives you a5 is equal to 0. So let's see what we got so far. We got a1 is a6, a2 is 2a6, a3 is 3a6, a4 is 4a6, and a5 is 0. Under these conditions, what we found would be an invariant. Now, the simplest thing we could do is to plug in some value for a6. Of course, we're not going to plug in 0 because that would just uh, kill the entire function. So we're going to plug in a6 equals 1, and that gives me i of y1 through y6 equals y1 plus 2y1 plus 3y4, 3 plus 4y4 plus y6. We know this is an invariant because we actually did check the condition before. Now, we are hoping that this gives you a different answer for 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. And if you plug it in, for 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, we get 4. If you evaluate this one at 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, you get 0 plus 2 plus 0 plus 4, that would give me 6, and then plus 1, that would be 7, which is 2 mod 5. Unfortunately, these two are not the same mod 5. Therefore, this is an invariant, but it gives you a different value for 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. And that, therefore, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1 does not appear anywhere in that sequence. Now, if you are the type of person who are actually doing math competitions and you would like to know how I would write down this solution, I would not write down any of these stuff in the proof except for the last step, which is to say I would start with defining this invariant i of y1 through y6 equals y1 plus 2y2 plus 3y3 plus 4y4 plus y6 proving that it is an invariant then checking these two and then you're done and you could even take that mod 10 if you want to and multiply everything by 2. Finally I decided to see if it would have been a plausible method to keep writing down more terms if you end up getting, you have to write down a million terms, of course, that would not be a plausible method to do that manually on an exam situation. So I decided to put that into Excel and see what it gives me. So this is what I figured. Mod 2, the period is 7. So after writing down, you know, a bunch of terms, 15 terms or so, you'll see a repetition. Mod 5, the repetition occurs uh, after 208 terms, which means you have to write down around 215 or so terms. 
Um, so that is quite reasonable, in fact. So if you decide to do this mod 5, in half an hour, you can definitely do the problem. But if you already done mod 10, you need 208 times 7, because 7 and 208 are relatively prime. So you need 1,456 terms to be written. So if you were to do this problem by doing it mod 10 and nothing else, it would really fail. This would not be something plausible to do, at least not for me in uh, an exam situation. So that brings me to the end of this video. If you like this video, I have a lot of videos like this on my channel and my focus is on making sure we talk about the ideas behind problem solving. And I hope you get some insights by watching my videos. I will see you in the next video.